Hi guys, I'm Alec Borkoff from BeTheGlow.com. If you've been following my videos, uh, then you probably know that I have a Greyhound machine as well as the old Japanese horizontal cabinet machine uh, called the Lucky Crane. The Lucky Crane died sometime last Christmas and that's when I bought the, the Greyhound. Since then I've been trying to revive it and bring it back to life and what I did was uh, measure the, the internal width of the machine and compared it to the Greyhound and I realized that they're exactly the same so I figured if I buy some parts from the Greyhound and put them into the Lucky Crane technically they should work so that's why that's what I ended up doing um, I bought some uh, parts from a gentleman named Artie Alva and uh, he sent me uh, two sets of parts from uh, two different Greyhound machines uh, one, one set had some parts that weren't working properly and some of well, the other set had other parts so I was able to kind of mix and match and by troubleshooting um, I was able to put together one complete set and uh, put it into the uh, to my lucky crane and make it work again so um, that's uh, this video is the, the journey that I want to share with you um, of uh, me reviving the lucky crane let's take a look all right, folks, here are the two boxes. Let's open them up and see what's inside. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this is... This is one of the uh, relay boards. There are seven uh, relays on each one. This is part of uh, one of the three boards that come with each Greyhound machine. So I'm going to set this aside for now. And this is the main CPU board uh, that connects to the uh, relay board with this ribbon cable. That's two. And the third one in each Greyhound machine, the third board is, uh, this is the uh, claw control board. There's uh, the power transformer and uh, the two uh, adjuster knobs. Let's see what else is in this box. We have the display unit, and let's see what else is in here. This is the second set. Uh, CPU board and the relay board that are actually attached to each other. And you can see here it says Greyhound Crane CPU Revision 2. And the last thing here, it, the last thing here is the Another claw control board it has uh, two adjusters for the claw strength. And a wiring harness. Alright, that's it for contents of box one. This looks like a uh, power supply unit. Uh, 
one one coin acceptor probably attached to the other one so I'm not going to pull it out just yet looks like we have the uh, claw assembly here it's a little a bit heavy Claw assembly and the motors. Claw assembly and the motors, and everything is in here. So we're gonna set this aside. Alright. And here is another claw assembly. related to that and some peanuts let's see what else we got I believe this is the bill acceptor I'll be using this, but I suppose it's nice to have. Looks like another uh, power supply. Let's see what else we got. Looks like another bill acceptor. Power switch. And this is, I believe, the unit that controls the bill acceptor. I guess this is the power source for the control unit for the bill acceptor. And I do believe that is all we have. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, insert uh, the uh, claw assembly into the lucky crane just to make sure that it fits uh, before I start the project uh, because if it's not uh, the right size and obviously it wouldn't make any sense to uh, attempt the transplant. So let's uh, check it out. Looks like um, it fits pretty well. Here are the wheels on the left side sitting on a rail. The wheels on the right side sitting on the rail. So it looks like the Lucky Crane is exactly the same, has exactly the same track as the Greyhound machine, which is very convenient. So you can see that it moves forward and back pretty well. Here's another view of uh, how the Greyhound assembly fits into the um, Lucky Crane cabinet. There's the claw. Looks like a pretty good fit so far. So here's how I have it set up. Uh, I have the uh, brown power cord, which I borrowed from the Lucky Crane. 
uh, that goes directly into the uh, panel with the switch and a couple of outlets. Uh, the outlets aren't really needed, but if you have a bill acceptor, uh, the bill acceptor controller would actually connect into that, plug into that. Um, from the switch, I have two brown wires that go into. Um, I, I had to buy a couple of uh, fuse holders and fuses, uh, which I didn't have. And uh, from the fuses, we have the wire going into the power supply. Uh, from the power supply, we have wiring going into the uh, the relay board. Uh, from there, the relay board connects to the CPU board. Uh, CPU board has a cable going to the display. Also from the CPU board, we have wire going to uh, the uh, coin acceptor and the claw control board, which has the two adjusters to uh, change the claw strength, and also a couple of wires to uh, the counter. And also from the coin acceptor, uh, well actually from the main harness uh, here, you have some wires that go to the joystick. Each of those uh, little connectors are used for different uh, directions of the uh, claw movement. And last but not least, connected to the uh, relay board, there is the main wiring harness that goes directly into the claw machine and supplies power to the claw and the motors. I did have some difficulties with it initially because uh, uh, I think one of the motors wasn't working correctly or there was something wrong with it, I think. Um, so I was able to swap it out entirely because I did receive two sets. Um, here's the, the second one that, I'm, that I use as a spare. This was the original one that was in that black uh, frame and uh, I was able to swap them out. And uh, there was an issue with one of the limit switches. Um, it wasn't wired correctly, so I used a multimeter and figure out that uh, there was a problem with the wiring. So I fixed that. And uh, now I think we're in good shape. So let's test it out. First, we flip the switch. Then we add a credit. I have one credit here. And since I don't have a joystick at the moment, what I'm going to do is simply connect one of the wires, which is labeled in black, to each of these little connectors, which are um, the joystick wires, and they move the claw in different directions. So let's try it. As you can see, I still have the original claw assembly in the machine uh, right there, but that will come out once I have everything working and tested. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh, the gray wire moves it forward. The green wire moves it backward. The yellow wire moves it to the right. Brown wire moves it to the left. And white wire moves it down. All right, so now I have the original parts removed from the machine. All we have left is the uh, Greyhound assembly with the claw. And here are all the Greyhound parts. I mounted the uh, claw control board up here for easy access for adjustment. Uh, power switch also uh, with an easy reach. Uh, the CPU board and the relay board down there uh, don't really need to access them very often so they can be underneath and the power supply unit here in the front. Um, that's pretty much it uh, down here. I'm not mounting the uh, coin acceptor since I mainly use uh, free play and that's the button here for the free play and here's a display. I still haven't quite figured out where to mount that um, but um, I will I'll have to see where the best place is to mount this. Uh, and then the original holes this was a two button machine. The original holes will be used for uh, one for the joystick and one for the uh, uh, drop button. And here you see all the wiring that will be connected to the joystick. Um, that is it. Let's give it another test and see how that works. Let's, uh, let's flip the switch down here. 
press the free play button, add a credit. Here I'm taking the black wire and connecting it to the gray, which is the forward motion. And the green one goes backward. Yellow goes to the right. And I guess we're almost run out of time, so we can use the white one to drop. And that, my friends, is it. All right, now we have everything set up. Uh, I don't have a joystick just yet, so I'm going to be using buttons that I had originally transplanted into my uh, Greyhound machine. Um, but I put them back into this crane so I can test it out with a two-button uh, operation. And I did show you already the, uh, the free play button that I installed. Everything here uh, is uh, set up. Uh, I do have the um, claw board and the, the the power switch mounted. I don't have the bottom uh, components, the power supply, two boards, and the display mounted yet because um, I want to make sure everything is completed before I start uh, screwing things down and make sure that all the wires reach and stuff like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is get the lighting to work. Now, this machine has two lamps, uh, two fluorescent lamps. Um, the problem is I can't hook them up the way they are because uh, this machine uh, has a, a converter, a transformer, that converts 120 volts to 100 because that's the, the voltage that the machine runs on. Um, so the fluorescent lights you require a ballast and a starter. The ball this ballast is also set up for 100 volts so I need to replace it in order to be able to hook it up to the power leads that are on the Greyhound because that these power leads come directly from um, the power outlet which is 120 volts and this ballast is only 100 so I ran out to Home Depot and uh, picked up a ballast this was about seven dollars and as you can see here at the bottom it lists um, F20 T12 type of lamp and this is exactly what this is F20 T12 that's the original one from this machine so I simply need to replace its original ballast with this one and uh, we should be good to go. So let me give it a shot. So if I understand it correctly, uh, Greyhound has some power leads here uh, that are 120 volts directly from the outlet. Um, there's uh, negative and there's positive. So one negative I have connected to uh, one white wire on the lamp and the positive I have running through the ballast and connecting to the other side of the lamp and the second wire runs through the starter and loops around and back into the other uh, side of the lamp. So if this works correctly uh, when I plug it in uh, the lamp should light up so let's give it a try. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Okay, I'm gonna flip the power switch on the machine and then plug it into the wall and that way I'll be able to unplug it easily without touching anything if something goes wrong. Alright, one, two, three. And we have success. So it looks like everything's hooked up correctly. So now I can mount the ballast in its final position and uh, get everything hooked up. Okay, so I think I have everything in its more or less final position. I have the ballast mounted in the original spot. It runs to the, uh, to the leads. Um, this is where it connects to the leads on the lamp. Um, I do need to put a little cap on it or something just to uh, iso um, you know, isolate the, uh, the connection. And everything is pretty much uh, ready to go in regards to the lighting. Um, I just need to uh, buy another uh, ballast uh, to mount on the back uh, where the other fluorescent lamp is. And these are the two wires that will supply uh, the power to the, to the ballast and the, uh, the back the rear lamp 
Okay, now we are at the back of the machine, and you can see here all the original equipment of the Lucky Crane. Uh, there are two transformers. Um, the one at the top uh, transformed 120 to 100 volts, and the one on this board uh, transformed 100 to 12, which is what the claw required. Uh, I'm going to be taking all of this out right now so that I can get this uh, fluorescent light set up and working as well. All right, all the equipment is out. Um, I have the ballast installed, uh, temporary connections made. Uh, one terminal of the ballast goes under the machine to the front and connects to the positive terminal on the um, Greyhound power leads. And the other connection is at the lamp. Uh, the lamp has a wire going through the starter and the other end uh, the other terminal on the lamp goes underneath the machine to the front and uh, connects to the other terminal on the Greyhound power output. I'm going to turn the machine on and make sure that the rear light works. Um, then get all the wiring situated and we'll be all done. I'm at the rear of the machine. I'm going to turn it on and see if this uh, the rear fluorescent light comes on. And it looks like we're good. Alright, uh, that's it for the lighting. I'm just going to get these wires uh, uh, nicely tucked in and connections capped. And then I'm going to move on to uh, mounting the control boards inside the machine. I'm going to mount the CPU board and the relay board right here. And that way it will be easily removable for service when needed. So let's do that. Alright, I have the boards mounted and they are ready to slide in. Alright, I have permanently mounted the uh, control boards, the CPU and the relays. Uh, also the fuses on that same board and the uh, power supply also mounted as well. Uh, so now the only thing I have left to do is figure out where to mount the display. All right, folks, the beast is alive. I have both lamps working. Everything is operational. So let's uh, set this up so that I can do a couple of demo plays for you. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. I also wanted to show you here, um, I made a little um, bracket here to uh, trigger the the limit switch on, on the claw assembly, so that when the claw returns uh, to the home position, the bracket will press the switch and, and cause the, the, the motors to stop. And also another little bracket here on the side, just for additional support. Um, that's probably not not the permanent solution, but at least for the time being, um, that'll suffice. Uh, well, I think that pretty much covers it for this transplant. Uh, I am expecting a shipment of a. Uh, a few belts. So I'm going to replace the belts so that the, the claw assembly moves a little bit more um, evenly and, and smoother. 
but um, aside from that, um, also a temporary mount for the display using some tape. Um, I'll figure something out. Last but not least, if the claw assembly seems to be running unevenly or slipping, um, you may need to replace the belts. So that's what I'm going to do right now. There's really no way to mess up the belt installation, but let's do a few test runs to make sure. Looks like we're in good shape. That's pretty much how it works. I do plan on replacing the original uh, the Greyhound Claw with um, the Sugarloaf, most likely, since I have some of the treasure chests in here which the Greyhound Claw cannot get around. But aside from that, uh, I do believe this is pretty much all set. Well, folks, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, please keep in mind that um, the Lucky Crane may eventually be for sale. Um, now that I have it you know, working completely, uh, I'm going to do some more refurbishing. I'll, uh, I will replace the claw, as I mentioned, uh, with the um, uh, Sugarloaf uh, Jewelry Claw, uh, since that's what this machine will primarily be used for, um, a jewelry type of prizes and sm sm very, very small plush. And um, what's nice about it is that it now uses parts that are much easier to find. Um, there are repair services available for the Greyhound, and uh, there are many machines that share the components, so it would be much easier to fix and troubleshoot in case it um, you know, stops working down the, down the line. Um, it's not nearly as big or heavy as uh, most other claw machines, so you know it's, it's there's definitely a bonus in that regard. So. You know, just something to keep in mind if you've been interested in having your own claw machine. This might not be a, a bad option. I'm not quite ready to sell it yet, but um, if you are interested, uh, please do let me know, and maybe we'll um, work something out in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.